Hi everyone, taking a look today at some footage that I shot while I was at the Australian Armour and Artillery Museum earlier this year. And this is of an artillery piece that's in the collection there. This is a 7.5 centimetre Panzer Abwehr Kanona or PAC 40 anti-tank gun of World War II. So the PAC 40 was an anti-tank gun that was developed by the Germans between 1939 and 1941 in response to the potential for the Soviet Union to be employing more heavily armoured vehicles than had been seen to date. So at the start of World War II, the standard anti-tank gun that the Germans were using was a 3.7cm Pac-36. They also had a replacement for that in development, which was the 5cm Pac-38 gun. However, it was felt that both of these guns would not be suitable for dealing with the increased armour in uh, future threats. Now these guns, the 3.7cm Pac-36 and the 5cm Pac-38, could deal with the existing Russian tanks, the BT-5, the BT-7 and the T-26. However, intelligence that there was heavier vehicles coming, such as the T-34, such as the KV-1, led the Germans to put this anti-tank gun into, into development. Now, the initial idea was to try and mount a heavier anti-tank gun onto the existing 5cm Pac-38 carriage, and that they could do this by using advanced lightweight alloys that would let them design a more powerful gun that was also much lighter. However, shortages in these advanced materials resulted in the Pac-40 ultimately using more conventional materials, such as more basic steels, and requiring a unique and substantially heavier carriage. This meant that the weapon would be over 1,400 kilos when it was in its firing configuration that would make it less mobile than the Pac-36 and Pac-38 AT guns, which could be moved easily by their gun crews, at least for relatively short distances. So to keep the weight down as much as possible, the carriage had simple wheels, solid wheels with rubber lining, and a narrow spaced armoured gun shield that was effective only against light weapons and shrapnel. The barrel length of the gun was 46 calibers, or 3.45 metres, and the total length of the uh, weapon with the carriage in the towing configuration was 6.2 metres. What you see here is the two control wheels, so the wheel on the right, that's for traverse, and the gun could traverse 65 degrees left-right, and the wheel that was on the left was for elevation, the gun could elevate a maximum of 22 degrees and depress down to minus 5. The gun was percussion fired and had a maximum rate of fire of 14 rounds per minute, partly enabled by the semi-automatic sliding block breech that would eject spent cartridge cases after firing. Now they're typically employed in batteries of 9 guns total, organised into 3 platoons of 3 guns each. Now when they were deployed, the spades that you can see at the end of the trailing arm here, those spades had to be dug into the ground to prevent the gun from moving backwards too much under, uh, under recoil. Um, similarly, there was a mu big muzzle brake at the front of the gun and you could only fire the AT rounds if that muzzle brake was, uh, was in place. Now, due to their substantial concussion and the dust and propellant cloud that would be kicked up upon firing, crews were encouraged to set the guns up in ambush positions and wait until relatively short ranges before opening fire on the, uh, on the enemy. That would improve the likelihood of the first round lethal hits and also minimise the, uh, the length of time after which they had exposed their position. Now I suggest you take a look at one of the impressive videos that's around on the internet of these guns firing so that you can appreciate the impact that it had when it let a round go. The muzzle energy here is about 2 megajoules and that's a sight to behold if you can see one of those uh, videos. Now it had two main armour piercing rounds, the Panzer Granada 39 capped ballistic capped round. That could penetrate um, 81mm of 30 degree angled armour at the range of 1000 metres. The more effective Panzer Granada 40 round, that was a composite rigid round with a tungsten core, could penetrate 87mm of uh, armour at uh, the range of a kilometre. It could also penetrate 108 millimetres of armour at the range of 500 metres. So this performance meant that this gun could take out almost anything that the Allies could throw at it right up until the end of the war, excluding maybe the heaviest of Russian armour. So the Pac-40 was modified specifically for mounting onto certain armoured vehicles. Both the 7.5cm Kampfwagen Kanona 40 and the 7.5cm Sturm Kanona 40, which used more compact ammunition and electric firing, were um, versions of the gun that were used in vehicles like the Panzer IV and the Stug III. That shorter ammunition meant that more rounds could be stowed inside the vehicle and also it was easier to handle them inside the confines of an armoured vehicle. So about 20,000 Pac-40s in total were manufactured by Rheinmetall Borsig, First production guns were delivered in February 1942 and by 1943 to become the preeminent gun in German anti-tank units. Now in this towed configuration it was typically moved around by a, an Opel Blitz truck or a light tracked vehicle to get it into position. The gun that you see here, it's in German grey which means the date of manufacture is sometime in 1942 before the army switched over to dark yellow in early 1943. Well, that's everything I want to say about the Pac-40 uh, anti-tank gun. Hope you enjoyed uh, this discussion, hearing me bang on about this anti-tank gun. I look forward to talking to you soon about another vehicle or anti-tank gun. And until then, I hope you stay well. Bye.